nadie me aquí a dormir ni nada. ¿Qué sé? Mejor esto. Well, do you want to press on to San Francisco after we water these horses, or you want to take it easy and spend the night? I think we ought to give the horses a rest. Your horse didn't look too tired. You're forcing me to be honest, Pa. I'm beat. I don't know how you stay in a saddle that long. You mean at my age? Well, I didn't say that. Of course you didn't. Buenos dias, amigos. May I take your horses? Now, please, uh, uh, double the grain and bed them down for the night, friend. Be happy to, amigo. Oh, where's the coldest beer in town? Right over there. It's not too cold, but it's the only beer in town. <laughs> Thank you. If we're going to be good to the horses, might as well be good to the riders. There we go. That's the best idea you've had all day. <laughs> oh, two cold beers, please. Senor, the beer is not too cold. Well, I think two warm beers will be fine, huh? <sighs> Joseph, I notice how easily pleased you are when the service is good. <laughs> Mr. Walker wants to sit down. Whiskey. Un momento, por favor. Don't you just a minute me. Whiskey, now. Let the girl go. What did you say? I said let the girl go. My beer you spilled. You want a drink, you wait your turn. I don't think you know who you're talking to, mister. No, not talking to you. My name's John Walker. Fine. Now let the girl go. And don't think of sick and Goliath on me. That'd be a big mistake. Didn't mean to get pushy, mister. It's all right. Everybody has a bad day. Let's go, Garth. Least I can do is buy you a drink. No hot feelings? No feelings, whatever. Did you see the size of the other fellow? Mm -hmm. And you and you were going to take him on? If I'd have had to. What do you think would have happened? I think it'd have kicked the heck out of me. I'll go back in and get him. No. You mean you're just going to buy him a drink and forget it? I didn't just buy him a drink, Garth. I bought him his last drink. It's bad. I should get that bullet out. But he's lost so much blood, I'm afraid to try it now. I've got the bleeding stopped. All you can do now is try to keep his fever down. What if the fever gets worse? 
They will have to take a chance and dig for that bullet. He must be moved. You know that. I know. What do you mean, moved? Where? Out of Los Robles. So look, I don't get it. First you say my father's in bad shape, and now you say I have to get him out of town. What is this? If we move him, he'll die. If we don't move him, he will be killed. What's this all about? The man your father killed was John Walker. My father shot that man in self-defense. You told me you saw it. I know that. But John Walker is an important man. He and his son Jed run this town. Jed will never let him leave here alive. What about the law, Sheriff? The Sheriff in Los Robles is self-appointed. Look, I don't care. Where is he? Your father killed him this afternoon. <laughs> Well, just don't stand there looking like a fool. What is it? Well, come on, speak up. Your, your father... What? What does he want now? Your father's dead. Murdered. in the saloon, and he bushwhacked him. Your pa hit him. How bad? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. No matter. Get my horse. I'll get the men together. I didn't ask you to get the men together. I said saddle my horse. Oh, Jed, you, you, you... Mister! I'm Mr. Walker now. I run this ranch now. I run that stinking town. Now get my horse. Yes, sir. Good whiskey, amigo. The man that killed my father, where is he? In the hotel. Bring him here. He's hurt very bad. I do not know if he can move. Bring him here. Carry him here. Drag him here. Please, Senor Walker. You got 10 minutes. I just can't believe a whole town's afraid of one man. 
You don't know the man. And you don't know this town. People are people. They want to be free. It is as easy to get used to slavery as it is to freedom. If it goes on long enough, it seems natural. We buy all our supplies from him. The water, even the Bibles we use in the church, at whatever price he asks. The money we pay is for protection. Protection from what? From John Walker. And now his son. There would be no difference. How long did they run this town? Well, they ran it when I got here 15 years ago. They will always run it. They feel they have the right. The right to shoot people in the back? Jed Walker has a lot of power. He can easily convince himself he's never wrong. Because no one dares to question him. It's all right, the city guard. Jack Walk. He's in the saloon. He wants your father. If I do not bring him in 10 minutes, I think he will kill me. Is he alone? I think so. I don't know. He's a crazy man. Por favor, senor, don't let him kill me. Keep an eye on my father, Padre. Let there be no more killings, my son. Let's go, Ricardo. Ben Cartwright? No, I'm his son. I told you I wanted Ben Cartwright. My father's unconscious. You want to talk, you talk to me. I didn't come here to talk. Your old man murdered my father. I want him. Your father ambushed my pie, shot him in the back. There were witnesses. That's a lie. Ask the father he saw it. I told you I didn't come here to talk. Now go get your old man. When that's empty, I'm going to kill you. I'm sorry about your father. Now go home. I'm gonna go home, that's all. Did you tell him your father fired in self-defense? I told him, and he didn't feel like believing me. I knew he wouldn't. It doesn't matter, it's over now. I wish I could get his fever down. He'll be back. What? Jed Walker will be back. Stop worrying about Jed Walker, Padre. I can take care of him. He won't come alone this time. He'll come with his men, many men. You made them lose face. He's going to have to kill you, too. I will pray for your father. And for you, too, my son.
saddled up. We're going to town. And give me a fresh horse. out here. Make it easy on yourself. Send out the old man. I'll let you live. You want him, Walker? You come and get him. There's only two ways of getting this room, and me and Pa got them both covered. What do you think? I think if we go in there, we'll lose a lot of men. Cartwright! I don't want any innocent folks to get hurt, so I'm going to give you a chance to think it over. You got 24 hours to make up your mind. Save yourself the wait. My mind's made up. Oh, I'm not finished yet. If your old man isn't out here in the town square in 24 hours, I'm going to start killing the citizens of Los Robles. One an hour until your father comes out. You think about that. Well, the town will be surrounded, so don't think about trying to leave. Until tomorrow, Mr. Cartwright. decision to make. I don't have any decision to make, Padre. Many innocent people will die if you don't do what Walker said. He's not bluffing. He will kill, just as he told you. Yeah, well, I'm not bluffing either. And look, the people of this town got themselves into this. Now, if they went out, they're gonna have to come up with some guts and they're gonna have to fight. They have no guns. And even if they did, they would not fight. I've got two revolvers and two rifles. Now, you find me four men that know how to use them, and we can stop Jed Walker. I cannot ask my people to kill. Oh, come on, Padre. Don't give me the meek shall inherit the earth stuff. That's my father lying on that bed over there. I'm not going to sacrifice him for a bunch of cowards. Now, you go tell him that. What did he say? He says he will fight. You understand? He says he will fight. He can't. What kind of a man is he? He's a son who's willing to fight for his father. And he doesn't care whose blood is on his hands? He don't seem to object to spilling his father's blood. But that's just one man. So was Jesus. Who will help? What does he expect us to do? Walker has so many men, so many guns. Cartwright has guns. A few. All he asks is four men. He thinks he can stop Jed Walker with four men. He's crazy. No one has ever stopped the Walkers. No one has ever tried. There's no need to try. Hmm? I said there's no need to try. What do you mean? I knew what kind of trouble there'd be. It's the only way. 
I left the bullet in Cartwright on purpose. What do you see? There'd be no reason for a son to fight for a dead father. Big God forgive you. God forgive all of you. father because he wants him to die. Where's the doctor now? In the salon. Right, Marie, you keep it in those cold compresses of my father. Right? the doctor. The town is being watched. You wouldn't have a chance. Don't you worry, Padre. I'll make it. and you pick up whatever you need. Then we go to the hotel. You make one wrong move and you're going to be operating on yourself. You understand me? All right, let's go. Well, what do you think about plan, Garth? Well, it's a good plan, Mr. Walker. Good plan. But I still think a couple of sticks of dynamite would do it. Oh, you've got a lot to learn about people, Garth. A lot to learn. Now, the only thing more dangerous than a hero is a dead hero. I don't get you. Well, I'm not about to make that kid into a martyr. Because martyrs make heroes out of cowards. I think he'll break by tomorrow. What if he doesn't? Hmm. Well... Nobody likes to die for somebody they don't know. Why, tomorrow we can put that dynamite in the hands of any one of the fine citizens of Los Robles and they'll throw it for us. You approve of my plan now, Garth? You know, you're John Walker's son, all right? <laughs> Why, thank you, Garth. Let's drink a toast to the fine citizens of Los Robles. You ready? I'm ready. Well, just so you'll do your best. If my father dies, so do you. Joseph, don't let hatred destroy your soul. You worry about saving my soul, Padre. I worry about saving my father.
keep the ether ready in case he comes to. for a while. I tried not to damage too much tissue probing for the bullet. What are his chances? I think his chances are good. I'm not much of a human being, but I'm a good doctor. Padre, you said some of those men over there might fight if they had a reason. Yes, I think so. All right, I want you to go to the saloon and tell him the doc worked on my father and he's fine. Shouldn't we wait? We can't wait. It's 1.15 right now. If we're gonna hit him, we're gonna have to do it while it's still dark. All right. I'll do my best. Good. Now, if it works out, tell the men to come in the back way, one at a time. I don't want any of, want any of the walkers men to know what's going on. If something should happen, the doctor... Don't you worry, Padre. I'm not gonna hurt the doc. Good luck. That potter's been gone about an hour. What will he do if the men will not help? I don't know. Thought I knew this morning, but I'm not so sure now. You would not let him take your father? No. How's the others? They're cowards. Even my father's a coward. And I hate him for it. I will don't. The difference between a coward and a brave man is a brave man has something to fight for. Don't worry, none of your people will die tomorrow. If you're going back home, your father will be worried about you. Buena suerte. I cannot argue with you anymore. There is no time. If you want to save yourselves, you must make the decision now. You cannot be sure that Cartwright will live. Or that Walker will kill any of us. I think if we help Walker, he will let us all live. You'd hold hands with the devil to save your own lives. That young Cartwright would have us all die for him. No, he would not. He will die tomorrow. But he will all be safe. You can all go home now and sleep well. And if you have trouble sleeping, you can go to confession and hail your guilt. But only God knows if you speak the truth. Maria. Do not tell me you do this because you want me safe. Why else? Safe for what? Safe for fear? Safe for guilt? Because we will all share the guilt and we will all share the fear. I pray God will not forgive any of us. Who's with me? No 
one is. All right. Go out one other time to the back of the hotel. I'll meet you there. This time of night, huh? There's a woman inside. She's very old. I've come to give her the less rights. Uh, how come you're using the back door, huh? I was afraid those gunmen up there would see me and try to shoot me. Well, I didn't think you Padres was afraid of dying. Oh, I'm not afraid, my son. I would just like to delay it as long as possible. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Huh? All right, go ahead. See? Padre. You better get plenty of rest. You'll have to be very busy tomorrow. Come on, let's get a drink. Yeah. What happened? Two of Walker's men stopped me outside. Did they see the eyes come in? No, I'm sure they did not. I told a very small lie and they let me pass. Good. First, I want to thank you both for coming. Don't thank me, senor. Thank my daughter, Maria. She's as persuasive as her mother was. <laughs> I just wish there were more of us. How many men do you think Walker left in town? I looked around this afternoon, and I would guess 10, maybe 12. They are all good with guns. 12, huh? Uh, 12 to 3, that's not very good odds. Make that 4. Thanks, Doc. She'll be a lot more help up here. All right, you, you said you looked around this afternoon. Were Walker's men moving around, or were they in set positions? Most of them are in positions. They're watching all the exits to the village. The two men I met downstairs appeared to be on patrol. They were heading for the saloon. Hey, Doc, you got a pencil and paper? Sure. I was going to leave you a bill. Sanchez, I want you to show us as close as you can remember the spots that Walker's men are in. Si, sí, amigo. This is the plaza. And this is saloon here. There are two here. But she's, uh, might get killed tomorrow. Yeah, well, that'd be an awful waste if she did. Yeah. Where's all the men tonight? <laughs> Hiding in the church? <laughs> I do not know, senor. <laughs> well, won't do them any good anyway. Jed Walker ain't on religion. <laughs> you know, if you was to be nice to us, we might talk to boss into letting you go. You know? Please, don't. She's gonna have to be a lot friendlier than that. That's Charlie, right? That's right. She better get friendly. She better get friendly. Listen up. You might be the only man who left around here tomorrow. <laughs> it is not that I do not like you, senor. But what if someone should come in? I'll tell him to get out. <laughs> will be easier and more comfortable, senor, in the back. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. I'll see you a little while, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> senor Charlie, it is a shame that you sit there alone. Why don't you come back here? All right, honey, your Charlie's coming. Take the street. Make sure he's tied up good. This one won't move a muscle. 
Maria, give me something to gag these two, all right? What? To, to tie around their mouths, keep quiet. See. Si. It's all quiet out on the street. Good. <laughs> this one, he'll be out for a long time. <laughs> that was my Sunday punch. No offense, Padre. Sanchez. All right, two down and ten to go. Let's move. I thought I would bring you some hot coffee. The night is cold. That's mighty friendly of you, Father. Well, how come you're being so nice? Uh, we priests will put on earth to serve all men. You wouldn't be trying to save our souls now, would you, Padre? I'd say it would be a challenge. <laughs> you better be satisfied with warming our stomachs with some of that coffee. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Forgive me. Good. Because. Yes, sir. You've been with the family for a long time, haven't you? Yes, sir. How long? About 12 years. And in all that time, you've always been loyal to my father. Yes, sir. You never lied to him, did you? No, sir. And why did you lie to me? I don't know what you mean. You know very well what I mean. Nobody bushwhacked my pa, did they, Garth? Answer me, Garth! Answer me! No, sir. My father shot Cartwright in the back just the way his son said, didn't he? Well, I had an argument in the saloon. Didn't he? My father shot him in the back. Yes, sir. You'll never lie to me again, will you, Garth? No, sir. Good. Who should know my father better than I? I'm my father's son. I'm glad we had this little conversation. Now we understand each other. You have the dynamite? Enough to blow up half of Los Robles. <laughs> well then, let's see who kills the Cartwrights. Coming too. Yes. 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 All right, all right, here, Bob. Try to take it easy. Take it easy, you're gonna be all right. I guess we should have passed up this place. Huh? Yeah, I guess we should have. How bad is it? It's pretty bad for a while, but you're gonna be fine. A good doctor. It is time, my son. Oh, I'm gonna be gone for a little while. You just uh, rest. Wait, wait. No, just take it easy. We'll be right back. You're gonna be fine. All right, let's go. I'll try to keep an eye on my father. Okay?
24 hours are up, Cartwright. Where's your father? He decided to sleep late. <laughs> your funny mouth's gonna get a lot of people killed. You don't scare anybody anymore, Walker. It's been enough killing. Drop your guns. You're not only dumb, Cartwright. You're blind. I got guns all over this town. Look around you. I think you ought to look around. Go on, look. The man behind every door and every window. You don't run this town anymore, Walker. It belongs to the people again. The people? <laughs> I, I am the people. <laughs> now listen to me, all of you. If I throw down your guns and come on out, I'll let you live. You hear me? Is this Jed Walker talking to you? I own you! Drop your guns. You coward. You old cowards! You're alone now, Walker. Drop it. Go on, drop it. Go! Cut right! He heard. I could not stop him. Joe. Joe, you're all right. I'm fine, fine. Everything's fine. God! Tell this is still my town! It's my town, God! I'm Ted Walker! This has always been a Walker town! You hear me? You hear me? This is a walking town. I own you. I own you. Ah. Just take it slow. <laughs> you be sure and try not to rush things, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> You've got a lot of stitches in you. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of myself. I'm quite sure that my young son here will baby me till I'm sick of it. <laughs> Joe, good luck and thanks. Why are you thanking me? For making me feel like a man again. Take care. I'm fighting. That's it. Buenas suerte. Buenas suerte. It will be a long time before Jed Walker gets out of prison. He'll think twice about coming back to Los Robles. Gracias, amigo. Maria. Thank you. Go with God, my son. Let's go home. Us all the mine, and we bought a house here in town. The old Creston place. Hey, that's a mansion. At least we got room enough for all the furniture. Hey, I'd like you to meet my brother, Horace. This is Mina and her father, Luke Calhoun. Hey, ma'am. Happy to meet you. Howdy. How's your husband? Uh... Your husband, Burge? Oh, Burge. Oh, yes. Well, um, we're not married yet. You know, the arrangements and things. 
Uh, he and his brothers are all back at the house. But their feet propped up on something. Uh, what are you doing in town, Joe? Yeah, we just had a little work to take care of. If you're supposed to be working, what are you doing standing around here talking? Now, you haven't changed a bit, have you? Papa, maybe they're trying to be polite. No, we really do have work to do. It's good to see you again, Mina. Happy to meet you, folks. Always a pleasure to see you, Luke. You still like him, don't you? I'm going to marry Verge, remember? I remember. <laughs> You're the one that's forgot. Oh. Morning, Miss Mina. Morning. Well, I'm not going to marry a man who sits around the house all day. I want a man who gets up every morning and goes to work. Uh, that sure don't sound like Birch. Well, it could be, if it weren't for those two no-count brothers of his. Now, they're a bad influence, Papa. Well, I'll run them off. No, I just want you to make it clear. No job, no wedding. If they don't still go to work? Then you can run them off. All three of them? All three of them. <laughs> Figuring on going to work. Well, we're you know waiting for the right job to come along, Mr. Calhoun. Well, if it'd come along, couldn't see you in here. Why don't you read out on the front porch where I can see you from a distance? Oh, you don't need to worry, Mr. Calhoun. It'll find us. Always does. Well, if the right job ain't found you out by tomorrow, you better go look for it. You hear me? We've been looking for work. Well, you better find a job by tomorrow. Out you go. You understand? You can run my brothers off, Mr. Calhoun. No. I'm gonna run all three of y'all. But I'm gonna marry your daughter. Not unless you go to work, you ain't. Who says? She does. She does? She does. No job, no wedding. And you can chew on that until dinner time. Well, he done it. He done it. I ain't gonna be able to sleep again till tonight. You heard him. No job, no whip. I heard him. What do you think we ought to do? I think we better get packed. Get packed? Get packed! You get well, back over there. We'll face these crises together. You're going to stay here and live up to your responsibilities. you got to face your obligation. And get a job. It's your duty. You owe it. To Mina. To Mina? Not to Mina, to us, your brothers. Bird, bird. Now you just sit down there, Bird. Listen to me, Verge boy. See, we ain't never had two nickels to rub together in our whole lives. See, now we're just sitting under a money tree, waiting for the fruit to fall. <laughs> and all we're asking you to do is just shake that tree a little. <sighs> I thought you were asking me to go to work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's not just for us, Verge. I mean, you got to think about yourself and Mina. I mean, the way she needs you, loves you, depends on you. Right. Yeah. But she's the one who said it. No job, no wedding. Oh, well. That's because she loves you. Well, that's an awful funny thing to say to someone you love. No, that's nothing compared to what some people say to people they love. Like what? You'll find that out after you're married. Right now, we got to get you a job. Jesse, can I have my own office? And a desk? Well, that sounds fair. I don't see why not. Well, then I'll be the boss, and you two can work for me. That way we all three got jobs. Yeah. We don't need to go that far, do we? Doing what? <sighs> Jesse. Jesse, I'm about to have an idea. Oh. Him help us. Nope. 
Are you in charge? That's what Furman said when he left. Well, I see you selling cow ponies for $45. Not my horse. Good ones cost you more. I was kind of hoping you'd say that. See, me and my brother got 36 ponies we like to sell. Cross between California and Texas stock, they're prime animals. I'm not interested. You do buy and sell horses, don't you? Not me, Furman. Well, you just told me you were in charge. Well, I am in charge of seeing that nobody walks off with the place till Furman gets back. Hey, Mr. Furman. They're all fine, sound stock in prime condition. Yeah, funny your pa never mentioned them to me. I don't belong to my pa, belong to me and my brother Hoss. You boys going into business for yourselves? Yeah, in a small way. I have to see them to give you a firm offer. But if they're what you say they are, they should be worth about uh, $40 a head. Well, I think they may be worth a little more than that. I'll bring some into town, let you take a look. You do that. Hey, who's your new hired hand? He isn't. Drifter. Slept in the loft last night. Been keeping an eye on the place this morning to pay for it. Hmm. Yep, well, I'll see you later. Take care. Hey, friend, I understand you're drifting. You want a job? Depends. I well, we need some help bringing some horses in the tent. I'll trap for a day or two. All right, you good with horses? Yep. They're bigger than me, but I'm smarter than them. Well, there might be some other chores. There always is. Well, so long as it's within the law, you name it, and I've done it. You're hired. My name's Joe Cartwright. My name's Rhodes. Not Dusty. I knew it. <laughs> Tell a man you named Rhodes, the next thing he says, Dusty. Been happening all my life. We don't get mad. What's your real name? Dusty. <laughs> Dusty, where are you from? I'm pointing any direction, and I've been there. Most times, I didn't like it much. You got a horse? Yeah. Why don't you get him saddled up? I'll be back in a few minutes. Welcome to Nevada. Is that where I am? Hoss! <laughs> hey, Hoss! You talking to McAdams? Yeah, he's talking about $40 a head, but he says he's got to take a look at them first. Yeah, well, if we can get these two stables bidding against the price each, has got to go right up, huh? Has to, has to. Hey, I hired a fellow to help us bring the horses in. He did? I, how come we don't use some of Paul's hands? Well, wait a minute. These are our horses and our deal. we got to pay our own way on them. Yeah, I reckon you're right. <laughs> Do look like you've got some good news. We sure have. Yes, sir. We were offered $40 a head for those ponies. And that was just the first offer. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to pay you back all the money we owe you for winter feet. Oh, well, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, that was a loan. We're going to pay it back. Well, there's no rush. No, it's perfectly all right. We said we'd pay you the end of this week. We're going to pay you the end of this week. Hmm. $40 a head, huh? That's not bad horse trading. Yeah, I think so. How come you're not smiling? Well, I'll smile when the money's in the bank. Uh, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Look before you leap. Mm. But he who hesitates is lost. <laughs> hey, ain't that food I smell? Yeah, supper's about to be served. Well, how come we ain't eating? Joseph, huh? in this case, he who hesitates is truly lost. I have a feeling you're right. You know, Budgie, you got a pretty good idea. You ain't as dumb as you look. Do you mean it, Papa? Sure, man. Just one thing. Where are you gonna get the money? Well, that's why we come to you. For what? For the money. My money? No, sir. You ain't gonna get me to put up any of my money to any of your harebrained schemes. No, sir, you ain't. I should say. You just said it was a good idea. Well, it is, considering the sauce. It's his idea. Let him put up the money. But I don't have any. Well, then you better get some ideas that don't cost anything. You won't give him the money? No, ma'am, I won't. Then I will. You ain't got no money. I don't. Well, do you? Don't I? I reckon you do, Mina. All right, Virgil, you and me's in business. And from now on, you want you to remember one thing, it's my money, and I got the final say on everything. Yes, sir. Go get your suit on, Virg. We're going to the bank. Oh, Mina, do I gotta wear that suit? Have to. And yes, you do. Come on, Virgil. Mm -hmm. 
why does he have to have an office and a desk? How come he can't go out and punch cows like anybody else? Because I want him to have an office and a desk, Papa. It's got more class. Well, I wish you wouldn't have said that word like you thought I wouldn't understand. I mean, I know a few things about class. One, you can't buy it with money. And two, it won't rub off on you. I'm doing. I'm making a price list here. Yeah, well, what, what are you scratching on Mr. Furman's price list for? Well, for your information, this ain't Mr. Furman's price list. This here's my price list. What do you mean it's your price list? Well, it ain't really my price list. You can see here, this C&P Development Company owns it. I, I just run it for him. <clears throat> Joseph, you know this fellow? Yeah, he's a crook. I heard that. That ain't a very nice way to talk. No, but it's very correct. Where's Mr. Furman? Well, what difference does that make? We want to sell him some horses. <laughs> what you asking? What are you offering? Where are the horses? I got six of them out front. Mm -hmm. well, just take a look at them. $15 a piece. We're asking 70 16 65 17 60 1750 55 18 45 19 40 20 50 20 55 20 60 Now wait a minute you're going up It's cuz you're not You done this before, haven't you? Oh, mm, just a little bit, yes. If you figure you got my back up against the wall. I'll tell you what, I'll give you $25 a piece for them horses. 40 Well, 40. you you take it or leave it. We'll leave it. Let's go over and talk to McAdams. Yeah. All right, well you make sure you take the horses with you now. A bunch of wild horses running around and sloppy. Mr. McAdams, we got those six horses out there I was telling you about. What horses? Cohen, what are you doing here? I'm the manager. You know him, too? Yeah, he's the brother of the other crook. C and P, livery stable, number two. All right, Owen, we got some horses we want to sell. A saddle broke? No. Broke the harness? No. Not interested. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh, Owen, can, can we leave the horses here a while? 25 cents a day, five cents a day for feed. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take them with us. Hey, where, where is the C&P Development Company? Right across the street from the bank. Thank you. Y'all come back and see us, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Joe. What do you say, horse? Howdy. Who owns this place? I do. And you're the man in charge, huh? That's right. Then you're the misguided man who's bought up all the livery stables in Virginia City so you could cheat the people. You want to say something, Budge? I'd better get back to my office. All right, now, now listen to me. All I'm trying to do is what any other businessman would do, buy low and sell high. Yeah, well, there's such a thing as buying too low. All I want to do is make a little profit. Well, there's a difference between making a profit and making an honest profit. What's that? What, what's what, what? What's the difference? Well, the... The, the difference is a matter of honor, of uh, being fair and reasonable with people. Oh, you're the one to decide who what's fair and reasonable around here. No, I didn't say that. I just heard you with my own ears. You said it was all right for a fella to make a little money, but if he made a lot of money, it was dishonorable and unfair. Did I say that? You sure did. I just heard you. Well, well, I'm right. Look, I'm right about this. Now, I don't know why, why you make me sound like I'm wrong. You just to sure yourself. Come on. Joe, 
Sure is a pretty dress, Mina. It's a pretty dress, Burge. That's what I said. No, you said it was a pretty dress. That's what I said? Well, it isn't a pretty dress. It's a pretty dress. What you been doing? Shopping again? Again. That's what I thought. You do a lot of that, don't you? A lot of what? Shopping. I haven't been shopping. Mina, you just go on talking. I'll sit here and just listen. Just listen. Yes, ma'am. What's wrong, Virgil? Don't you feel well? I felt fine up till a minute ago. Oh. Well, I just wanted to talk to you about the wedding. What about it? I got a letter from Philadelphia. My Aunt Mary is sick and won't be able to travel for a few weeks. So we'll have to set the wedding back a little. But don't tell Papa. We don't want him to worry about her. I won't say a word. Is that all right with you, Verge? It's not my place to tell him. I mean about the wedding. Oh, that's all right. That's fine. You know, Verge, sometime I get the feeling you don't really want to get married. Sure I do. But it's kind of like sticking your foot into a bear trap. A man has to get up his nerve to do a thing like that on purpose. Yes. Well, see you at supper. Mina, you're about the prettiest bear trap I ever seen. The prettiest bear trap, Verge. That's what I said. That is not what you said. <laughs> Then what did I say? I said fifteen dollars a piece for them horses. Can you cut that out? Turn loose of my stamp. Look, you offered me twenty-five dollars. Yeah, you turned it down. All right, well, I'm accepting it now. I ain't offering it now. Fifteen dollars. Twenty-five. Bet the difference? Sold. Twenty dollars a piece for them nags. You're some kind of horse trader. Man don't stand a chance with the likes of you. Joe, you're right. He is a crook. How much is six times 20? Ponies the Cartwrights had. Shh. You stop shushing me. Ow. How come you done that? Because you've done it to me. Now, well, I'm the head of this family. Anybody does any of that, I'll do it. Oh, you do it. Jesse. Jesse, do you understand me when I talk? Oh, well, I understand the words, all right. And I understand you just fine when you talk. Well, that's because I'm a plain-spoken man. But when I talk to Mina, well, I know we're talking the same language, but we don't mean the same thing. Well, that's that's because she's a woman. I've told you how to talk to women. Yeah. You gotta tell them how pretty they are. Yeah. That's what I done. Well. And she said I was right, but I was wrong. Oh, that's that's normal. Maybe she's only half convinced that she's pretty. You know, you could be right. She, she might just be you know, thinking she's too pretty. You know. Jesse, Jesse, do I gotta marry her? Well, if you don't, somebody's gonna be awful broken up about it. Mina? You. I think I better go back to my office. How come your prices are lower than mine? Well, I figured I'd do more business that way. Change them, stumphead. We just plain got slickered, that's all. Uh, he saw us coming all the way down the pike. Ain't you gonna say I told you so? 
No. That wasn't just us, it was everybody. They doubled the prices on everything. No need for it, either. Furman and McAdams always made a good living out of those tables. Ah, uh, it's just plain greed, that's all. Well, I don't know what to say. Of course, you could take the horses over to Sacramento or Reno or sell them. Uh, it's a long, hot drive this time of year. Yeah, I know that. Well, I gotta get back to the ranch. I got a lot of things to do. I'll see you back there later. Yeah. Take it easy, Paul. Ah, uh, Dad, burn it. Hey. You know, Pa said something about, uh, about McAdams and Furman making money with their stables. Yeah. And at the old prices, too. Now, just what would happen if somebody opened up a new stable? Yeah. At those same old prices. You clean up, cut everybody under. Yeah! Nah, that ain't gonna work. What do we know about running a livery stable? Well, nothing now, but we can learn, couldn't we? I ran a livery stable once for a man down in Houston. A big fella named O'Brien, and we made lots of money. But if you're gonna have a livery stable, you gotta have a barn. Mm. Hey, what about that old Conroy barn up there the end of town? Hey, you know, that's big enough. Yeah. Reckon who owns that now? Well, somebody at the bank could tell you. Why do you know that? I worked in a bank once in Texarkana. Second day I was there, John Wesley Harden walked in with a gun in each hand and made a sizable withdrawal. So I moved on to Little Rock. Dusty, thank you. Why don't you go have a beer? We're going to the bank. See you later. stables of yours and if you proved well all i know is we're making money uh, yeah I, I realize that but uh, you're sure not making any friends i ain't in business to make friends i see well of course that uh, that answers my question so i do trouble you mr calhoun call me luke good day mr calhoun The bank doesn't own the barn and corrals, but we are acting as agents for the owner, if he can rent it. Well, just how much would the rent be? Hundred dollars a month. Hundred dollars a month? Or if you care to sign a one year's lease and pay the first three months in advance, fifty dollars a month. Fifty, huh? Well, that's more like it. What do you think? Yeah, I think we ought to go for that. John, drop the papers. Be back in an hour. Right. Howdy, Mina. Hello, Papa. You look sad. Is there something wrong? No, Papa. I was just thinking about Verge. Well, you got a good reason for looking sad. Well, I mean, he's a good boy, Papa. He's gentle and innocent and a little dumb. Is that the kind of man you want to marry? That's what I was thinking about. Well, Mina, if he ain't exactly the kind of boy you want to marry, you should not not to marry him. Well, he's not exactly what I want, Papa, but there's a lot of raw material to work with. That boy's all raw material. He's virgin country. But don't you get the idea you're gonna change him. For all the virgins being dumb, he's got a lot of backbone. Virg? Well, whether you see it or not, it's there. If it wasn't, them brothers would have twisted him all out of shape a long time ago. Mm, I hadn't thought of that. They started on him young, Mina, and they've been working on him a long time. And he's still gentle, innocent, and a little dumb. Well, won't he change after we're married? Yeah, he won't be innocent anymore. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, talked to Mr. Lanier down at the saddle shop. And he said we could use some of his old saddles and bridles and we could pay him back when we could. And he ain't altogether in love with that CMP development company neither. Hey, good deal. I talked to Mr. Atkins at the feed store and he said he'd give us credit for a month. Hey, that's great. Fellas, I think we're in the livery stable business. Yeah, yeah and that means we're going to clean up. You bet. <laughs>
everybody sees it, baby. Yeah. Mm. That's not bad, is it? What? You're shy now, sir, right? I used paint signs for a medicine show I was traveling with. Yeah. Went broke in Tony Paul. Well, no reflection on your sign. No, if it hadn't been for my signs, we'd have gone broke in Daggett. Ah. Ah, we're open for business. What do we do now? We just sit back and wait for the crowds to roll in. Where you stand, Joe, you don't want to get trampled by the crowd. Yeah. Hey, is he coming this way? Hi there. Nice day, isn't it? Yep. Can, uh, can I help you with something? Nope. Right where the crowds are. He just left. I just don't understand it. Those are the lowest prices in town. Are you sure people know about this place? Oh, yeah, they know, all right. We, we put our handbills on the price list in the saloon, and the barbershop, the courthouse, even at the jailhouse. They know, all right. Well, there's got to be some reason. You know, I just might know what that reason is. <laughs> Dusty, you stay here. Someone's got to look out the store. I was afraid you'd say that. Hey, look at that. Your prices are lower than ours all the way down the line. Yeah, but they'll lose money. Yeah, until they drive us out of business and then they'll raise them again. Well, they just won't drive us out of business. We'll lower our prices. Yeah, and then we lose money. Let's get out of the business. Right. The sooner the better. Let's go see if we can get our rent back. I agree with you, Joe. A man shouldn't have to pay for something he doesn't need. Well, John, I'm glad you understand. And if it were up to me, I'd tear up the lease and give you your money back. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate that, John. We sure do. But it's not up to me. It's up to the owner. I've already turned over the papers and the money to him. Uh... Uh, who, who would that be? C&P Development Company, right across the street. Mr. Calhoun. If you like, I'll walk over and introduce you. No, no need, John. Mr. Calhoun and I are old friends. <laughs> Something? Yeah, satisfaction. Well, you ain't gonna find it here. Now look, Luke, we want the money and the lease back. I can't do it, Joe. Ain't good business. What do you mean, business? That wasn't business, that was a trick, chicanery. Chicken canary? Chicanery, the deception. It was business. Well, just what do you think business is? Business? Well, oh, business is when a man with money meets a man with experience. The man with the experience gets the money, and the man with the money gets the experience. I'll expect that rent the first of every month. Hello, Joe. Hoss. And you took the money? Well, we ran it in the bond meter. Knowing that if you cut your prices, you'd run them out of business. Nobody falls to rent that bond meter. It's their idea. But they didn't know you owned it. That's right. If everybody knew the truth about everything, it wouldn't be no business. Papa, I'm ashamed that you'd even have an idea like that. Well, it wasn't my idea. It was Verge's. Verge? My Verge? That Verge? That's him. You could come out now, Verge. They're gone.
Howdy, Mina. You sure look pretty. Don't try to change the subject. Was that your idea? What idea? To rent the Cartwrights that barn and then run them out of business. I didn't know it was going to be the Cartwrights. But it was your idea. Yes, ma'am. Well, you're going to tear up that lease and give them their money back. Do you understand? No. Then I'll explain it to you. No need to. I understand. But I'm not going to give the money back. You're not? No. Now, Verge, no. you don't understand. No, Miss Mina. It's you that don't understand. See on that door there? That says Virgil Potter. That's me. That's my office. Now you show me on that door where it says Mina Calhoun, and I'll give them their money back. It was my money that paid for that office. And you ain't never gonna let me forget it, are you? Verge. I'm sorry I said that. Sorry, I got you into this. Well, Dusty, forget it, It's not your fault. If I just kept my big mouth shut, maybe you wouldn't be in this place. Well, Dusty, it wasn't you. It was all three of us. No, oh, it seems like it's been happening my whole life. Going around getting people all caught up in my big ideas. And running off and leaving them to make it come out right. Forget about it, will you? Well, this time I'm sticking it out till the end. Win or lose. Well, I think I can save you some time, Dusty. I got a notion I can tell you how this is going to turn out. I've already <laughs> Just ain't fair. It's fair. Unless you know of a set of rules that says it's not. Somehow it just don't seem right. Didn't say it was right, said it was fair. Well, what now? Well, we'll give everything back and close the doors. You mean you're quitting? Yeah, I suppose that's what I mean. Well, I guess it's a smart man knows when he's beaten. Well, we ain't necessarily beaten. What would you call it? Well, they, they just won this round, that's all. Oh, it's when you close those doors, the fight's over. Well, now, what do you expect us to do? Lower the prices again? And then they lower their prices. Then we lower our prices, and before you know, we're giving everything away free. And the world's first free livery stable. Well, we'd have all the business in town, anyway. <laughs> that's it! That's it, a free livery stable. We'd have all the business in town. Sure. That's the answer, Joe. We give it away. Free? Absolutely, completely, 100% free. Why, we'll clean up. <laughs> Dusty, you'll have to look away. You don't understand. You're right, I don't. It's a ding joint. It's a ding bat. It's <laughs> almost local. Will you just listen to me? Go ahead. When I was with the medicine show, they had a ding joint. That's a free show. Absolutely free. We'd set up a tent and hang things along the side. Pictures out of books and bugs we'd picked up and mounted under glass, anything. Then after they'd walked through the tent, at the exit, there was a big glass bowl for contributions or donations, whatever you want to call it. And they put money in there? Well, usually no more than a nickel or a dime, but something. And that coin would hit that glass bowl with a loud ding. That's why they call it a ding joint. Dusty, that is the most stupid, ridiculous, idiotic idea I have ever heard in my entire life. Say, say you. Oh, we had a nice ride. Where were you? Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, what if I don't want to make a donation? If you don't want to, you don't have to. Thanks. 
Oh, thank you. What for? Probably oh, business. I don't take something for nothing. That's it, it's free. You can't get much cheaper than that. Well, it looks like we're out of work again. Jess, I got a what if for you. You got a what if for me? Yeah. Well, what if? What if Luke decides to run us off now that we're out of work? Read this. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said you could read. Well, I can't. You can't read. It. What's that word right there? There. That's right. Now, what's that word right there? In. Now, that's is. And it says right between that there and is that there's been a gold strike in Montana. You know what that means, don't you? Yeah. They found gold in Montana. And if, if they found gold, anybody can find gold. And we're just anybody. Oh, Jesse, turn me loose in Montana. I can find gold in the ground. I can track bluebirds across empty skies. Hi, Owen. And then, Virgil. Jesse. Hi, Verge. Them doing so well sure is bad for business. Oh, bad, bad. Well, just me and Owen being out of work, old Luke, he's gonna run us off. No, 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 he won't. I, I won't let him. How are you gonna stop him? I I'll just tell him. If you go, I go. Well, you don't have to do that, Verge. Well, I know, but that's what I'm gonna do. That's a sweet boy, Jess. Well, I think he means that. You mean that, don't you? Sure do. You ain't gonna leave me alone with that woman. You ever learn how to read? Miss Clackley taught me. Miss Clackley? Cackley. Cackley? Yeah, I used to work with her. You worked with her. I didn't graduate. You read it to him. There has been gold discovered in Montana. I'd better read it. There's been a gold strike in Montana. Right. See how I read? You'd have graduated, you could have read like that. Hurry up, Papa. Every minute you wait costs you money. Well, Miss Mina. Hello. Well, this is idea. How come he can't do it? Because you're going to. How come I always get stuck doing all the talking? That's what you do best. It is? In a manner of speaking. Howdy, Miss Mina. That's the third time today that fella said hello to you. It's the fifth time, Papa. What do you figure he's up to? Number six. Just a minute, Papa. You come, too. It's hard to believe it really worked, ain't it? Well, that dusty nose is ding joints. <laughs> when we get rich, we'll have enough money to pay Pa, maybe That's a little left over. Hi, Joe. What do you say there, horse? Howdy. Hi, Luke. What can we do for you? Oh, nothing. We just drop by and see how y'all's doing. Uh, we're doing just fine. Good. Papa? All right. You win. Well, if we win, you lose. That's right. Now, well, just what is it that you lose? Go ahead, Papa. Here's your lease and the rent money back. No deal. Jesse sold them cow ponies for sixty dollars a piece. Here's the money to make up the difference to you. No deal. But just where you want. I want you out of the livery stable business. All right. If 
Furman McAdams at the Bob Bechdel's stable, so I'll have the papers drawn up in the morning. Now you got a deal. Not yet. I owe you an apology, and I'm offering it to you. Accepted. <laughs> Accepted, Luke. Well, now that we're getting everything in order, there's one more thing. Burge. Burge, there's something I have to tell you. There aren't any relatives coming from the East. I don't have an Aunt Mary. Well, there's just Papa and me. I only told you that so I could put off the wedding. Until I was sure. Well, now I'm sure. And, well, I think... Well, I don't think... Virg, would you please say something? Did you know they found gold in Montana? They what? It says so, right here. First, <laughs> I just love you. <gasps> well, in a very special way. <laughs> you know, if things had been a little different... You're a very sweet boy, Verge. And you're about the... the prettiest thing I ever seen. And you've got a natural head for business. Well, it was your money started it in the first place. Oh, Verge. I'm going to miss you. Probably, but not very much. Bert! Bert! Just enough. What are you doing? Well, what's it look like I'm doing? I'm looking at a map. Trying to find Montana. Well, you don't need no map. I know where Montana is. Oh, I spent too long You time... know where Montana is. That's right. You don't know where Montana is. You don't even know where Reno is. I know where Reno is. Reno's dead ahead. It's that way to the ocean. Well, ain't Reno got an ocean? Ain't Reno got an ocean. That's a dumb thing. Well, you, you, you just... Yeah, you watch it. I'm yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you, you can track a well, little Where's he going? To Montana, Papa. What for? To find the end of the rainbow. Time the word gets out, all the good claims are gone. And the bad ones are staked out for 10 miles in every direction. Them boys are going to find nothing but lumps and bruises. But how can you be so sure of that? Well, I ought to be. I've been there often enough. They're going to have a long ride for nothing. Yeah, well, here's one time all that experience of yours is going to pay off. No, Joe, it doesn't. I know it's a waste, and I can convince everybody but myself. So I gotta hurry, those three boys will beat me to Montana. That's the luck. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need it, Dusty. <laughs> Joe, why don't you and Hoss come for Sunday supper? Uh, Sunday supper? Oh, no, 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 no. We, we, we can't come to Sunday supper because we've got a whole lot of horses around. Well, we ain't got no horses. Oh, no yes, we thing. do. we got a lot of horses We ain't got Ma'am, I'll be there with bells. Oh, Look, well, we're, we're running a ding well, joint well, here. Well, we you have to come do. early Sunday afternoon. I can pack a picnic lunch. Why, Mel, that'd be fun. We'll just go that, that, that isn't a very good day, you know. You know, we're over. Welcome to the family. Come on, 
Let's go. There you go, Bob. All set. Oh, good. Here comes the angel of mercy. I notice every time we have a cattle drive, Bob Singh has a sick cousin he has to take care of. Yeah, that's lucky, I reckon. Hey, you ain't got another sick cousin you can loan me, have you? Yeah, what I'd like to know is how do you get your cousin to send the telegrams just at the right time? Just lucky. Maybe Bob Singh get job in Sacramento, find boss, and not yet yet all time when cousin's sick. <laughs> John, I'm fine. <laughs> there you go, brother. Hey, by the looks of this weather, it's liable to get a little wet. Well, we've been wet before. Joe, I hope this uh, new cook, this Griffin, I hope he's dependable. Uh, he swears he is. Tell him to put the supplies on our bill. He said he'd be here 6 o'clock tomorrow morning with a wagon provision ready to go. And well, that should put you in Beaver Flats before sundown. Be a lot of us there ready to eat. We'll be there. Just make sure you got a hot supper for us. Don't worry about it. If you're not there, I'll eat it myself. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go! Take care. I'm saying you take it easy. Have a good trip, huh? You'll be good boy, little Joe. Don't worry. Say hello to your cousin for me. All right. Hang out. Hey -ya! Easy now. Easy now. Easy. 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 Oh, now easy. 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 Easy.
Because they're not all there. At least not yet, anyway. You mean to tell me you fellas ain't got most of them rounded up? It's the weather. Made them stick a little deeper in the brush. Uh, mainly, though, I figure we ought to save some chasing for you and Joe. That figures. Better get back to camp before that storm breaks. losing your taste for the great outdoors. I ain't never had no taste for the outdoors, never claimed I did. That's my little brother. He just thrives on cold weather. Oh, is that so? I didn't know that. Yeah. Probably go barefooted in the blue norther. A blue norther? Ah, that's hard to believe. No hard to believe than most of the sour grapes I've been listening to. No, huh? sour grapes it is all right. Yeah, sure. sure sounds good to me. No, I'm dog tired. I'm gonna get me some shut eye. <coughs> I wish I was the one back there waiting for that cook. Warm fire and a hot toddy. <laughs> Be laughing like a pup eating bird. <laughs>
Station boy, what did you do that for? Couldn't get you awake. You had too much to drink. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with having a drink with an old friend. Not if it's one drink. You cost us six hours. Likely that job with the Cartwrights. <sighs> Blast you, boy. You, you talk just like your ma. If I ever get myself dry, you're gonna wish you never seat no more water. But, Pa, I... Don't butt paw me. You get that team hitched up. You're so all fired anxious about this job. <sighs> That's all. You see, I told you we'd be too late. Cut out your jabbering and get on down and check the barn. Take our place. Yep, team.
are you stopping here for? Because this here is the flats, and this is where we're supposed to meet them. Ain't nobody been through here. That's right. Appears like we made it in plenty of time. You mean to wait here? Well, why not? Because the longer that drive is without hot meals, the likelier they're going to find someone to provide them. That's why. Boy, you are bound and determined to rile me, ain't you? Pa, there ain't no way we can miss a whole herd. All we got to do is move north. Chances are, they'll be so glad to see us, they won't even be mad over you being late. So help me. If we miss that herd, Ma or no Ma, you're going to stay home next time. Yeah. I should have to bring in the water at night. What's the supper? Yarky, same as breakfast. Oh, shuck it. Probably? Yeah. yeah. You sure were right, Candy. It's slow going. Well, they keep at it. We should be able to move them out before dark. Mm. No, never mind. We'll get an early start in the morning. Hey, uh, hey, what happened to that wagon, anyhow? Well, I mean, if we're going to be here all night, I'd uh, sort of like to start the day out on something a little more substantial than jerky. I mean, like steak and eggs. Well, if Joe knows we're late. He's probably on his way. He's liable not to come all the way. I, I think I'll go ride and see if I can find him. All right. Hey, I'm not too fond of this jerky myself.
this wagon's a site for sore eyes. That is, if you're the cook my little brother hired. You see, I told her we'd find him. Hush up, boy. Well, I am if your name be Cartwright. That's right, Hoss. You must be Griffin. Yeah. Abrams, this here's my boy Tim. Hi. Hi, how are you, young man? Uh, where's little Joe, anyhow? Well, well we, uh, we kind of miss connections, you know, so I come on without him. Well, he'll catch up with us sooner or later. But let's get you rolling right now. I don't want to be late for supper. <laughs> All right. Take him out. Want some more of these ham hocks? Oh, no, no. Well, look, there's plenty more in the pot. No, no, thanks, all filled up. Uh, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, no, no more for me, thank you. Thank you. It was good. Well, I'll tell you, my little brother made no mistake when he put you on the job. <laughs> thank you. Oh. Here you go. Watch it, man, it's hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, he made a mistake somewhere. He's not here. Sorry you missed connections. Oh, no, sir. We didn't miss anything. When we got to the house. He... Hush up, Tim. I didn't know you'd come by the house. Well, Pa didn't want to know he was late on it. Just, we was only a couple, two or three hours late. Your, your boy just went on ahead of us, that's all. You sure about that? I mean, that's all he had to do was hang around there and wait for you. Well, well now, there, there weren't nobody there. I mean, the boy even checked the barn. You can ask him. That's the honest truth. I swear. Well, stop worrying about it. It'll be along. Thank you. Hmm. I wonder what happened then. I got the feeling little Joe thought that Griffin wasn't going to show up, so he went into Virginia City to look for a new cook. Couldn't be.
Now, gang train runs its course more severely and much quicker in some cases. Swelling and dusky redness, deep shade of burning pain, of course, a few hours. Deep discoloration which spreads through the tissues. Death. Any attempt to save part of the Hopeless. Patient's only chance lies in him. some of the lightning.
Come on, youngin. Hey, you two better hurry up. We're ready to move out. Oh, yeah. That's all right. You go ahead. Uh, What's wrong? Yeah, Paul just figured somebody ought to drive back Warren Joe so he don't come following after us with an extra junk wagon. Go ahead, Caddy. We'll catch up with you. Whatever you say. Give my best to Joe. untied like this. Right, blood. Joe read was entirely correct. Joe's diagnosis was correct, too, even though a bit premature. Amputation is a harsh remedy, but fortunately, due to the infection, he didn't have the strength to do it. But he's young and he's strong. It'll take a while, but he'll be fine. You know, making a decision like that takes more courage than just letting go sometimes, Ben. He's quite a boy.
can't do anything to get out of Roundup, will you?